This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and here's one that you've been asking for, the Lenovo Y700. This is the latest set of Y-series models. We have the 15-inch here, we have the 17-inch right here. Both of them have pretty slim designs, the usual Lenovo black and red look, and they're one of the more affordable set of 15 and 17-inch gamers you can get. And we're going to look at them now. All right, so here we have a 15.6-inch and a 17-inch Lenovo Y500. This is the 15.6-inch. They look nearly identical, so we're going to be switching between these, and they have pretty much identical specs, too. Either way, you're going to get the Skylake Intel Generation Core i7-67HQ that is a quad-core 45-watt CPU, so your typical gaming-slash-multimedia-slash-powerhouse kind of CPU inside. 16 gigs of RAM, two RAM slots inside there. So that's also pretty typical of a high-end machine. Of course, if you're adventurous and you get 16 gig modules, you could push that to 32 gigs. NVIDIA GTX 960M, ours have four gigs of DDR5 VRAM. There are even lower end models that have two gigs of VRAM. Honestly, with a 1080p display, unless you're plugging in a 4K monitor, and these really don't have the horsepower to game at 4K, even the, the two gigs of VRAM would be fine, but more is nice. As you can see, we still have the Lenovo kind of matte black and red look. They're getting a little more aggressive here. They've got this thing going on over here and a little texture. And it's fairly slim, but also quite heavy. The 17 inch I'm handling right now is 7.7 .7 pounds. The 15 inch is 5.6 pounds. Both of these have the same style. They have the same port selection. They have the same ex ports, expandable storage inside the M2 SSD slot, the two and a half inch drive bay, the socketed wireless card, the two RAM slots. The lids on these and the bottom panels are aluminum. They might not look it. It has that usual, it kind of Lenovo likes to do this brushed kind of finish here on their Y-series gaming laptops. That's what it looks like there. So they are aluminum, pretty stiff chassis. And again, like I said, pretty slim for a 17 inch machine. That is not bad looking at all. I think the styling works a little better overall on the 17 inch model. This looks a little bit odd. <laughs> right here, the cutouts, right? And, and the whole proportions of the thing is, is a little bit extreme. And we're going to switch and open up the 17-inch model so you can see it. Backlit red keyboard, typical of Lenovo. No multi-zone, no multi-color backlighting here. This is not an Alienware, an MSI, higher-end gaming laptop, that sort of thing. Trackpad offset because we have a number pad on both of these. A the trackpad is a large synaptics trackpad. It is mediocre. This is not like the uh, recent Dell XPS 15 and 13 with the updated trackpad and drivers that are so good or the recent Surface Pro 4 and Surface Book trackpad. These are typical kind of Windows 8 trackpads, which is to say I'm real careful when I'm manipulating files because it's accidents could happen kind of thing. You know, they're just not real precise with the control. The keyboard, on the other hand, has 1.5 millimeter key travel. Pretty rigid deck here. It's a nice look, too. It's all one-piece design there. I have no qualms with the keyboard at all. And for gamers, of course, and number crunchers also, having the number pad is handy. we got our speakers here. JBL Audio, by the way, on both of these two-watt JBL stereo speakers. And on the bottom, we have our three-watt subwoofer. Good audio, really good sounding audio. There's Dolby software on board, so you can choose from a couple of different settings, you know, movie, gaming, that sort of thing. It, really loud, really full. We'll play those for you, but that's nice. On the bottom here, we have ventilation. We have ventilation on the back. It exhausts out the back, so it's not going to heat you up, which is always a nice thing. Now, looking at the 17-inch model, again, I think the proportions and, and the, the cut down and all that sort of thing work a little bit better on this model. It looks kind of cool. It's a bit understated, so it, it's not an in-your-face, oh my god, gamer, but it looks, you know, kind of gamery. And we're going to open it up and check it out inside. Pretty stiff single hinge running across here. Some glossy plastic. So this part here, if you like the gaming look, that's just not bad at all, honestly. This is a nice matte soft touch thing. Not quite like the Alienware 15 and 17 that feels a little bit more, ooh, ah, you just want to touch it until you feel creepy. But it's nice enough. Shows fingerprints like crazy, though, so watch out for that. But not, nothing shows fingerprints as much as this trackpad, which is already getting schmeary right in here. So here's the overall look and feel of the 17-inch, and I think you can see what I mean. This may be a little bit less jarring here, this look, but beauty's in the eye of the beholder. Same keyboard travel, same synaptics trackpad for better or worse here on this model. Now for the ports, 
not too exciting. But again, these are relatively speaking affordable machines. They're not going to have cutting edge stuff, which means $1,100 for a fairly decent configuration, 15.6 inch and 1149 for this 17 inch. And that decent configuration gets you that quad core i7. That's the only CPU option right now, the NVIDIA GTX 960M with 4 gigs of VRAM, a 128 gig M2 boot SSD that is just MSAT, that rather that's just SAT interface. It's not NVMe or PCIe, any of the faster stuff. You get a 2.5 inch drive bay. The 2.5 inch drive bay has a 1 terabyte 5400 RPM hard drive. So the big place to store all your games and your media files, 5400 RPM is not that fast, but this is one of those Western digital 7 millimeter high slim drives. A pain in the neck to find something else to put in there because it takes a slim height drive, but better than performance than you would expect. So on the ports, we have two USB 3.0 that they've gone with a red color instead just to match the design. HDMI, Ethernet with a little bit of a drop down right there because it's a fairly slim area. You got your lock slot. And on this side, that is the power connector right there. It takes Lenovo rectangular power connector. It comes with 120 watts power supply. Both of these use the same power supply. Average size, you know, beefy brick, but not humongous. USB 2.0 port. Why well, haven't bothered with that anymore, right? That seems kind of, I don't know. SD card slot and your combo mic headphone jack. No fancy separate audio jacks. No nice Sabre audio jack like on the MSI Apache Pro that we recently reviewed priced around the same to just a little bit more and also worth considering and some more modern touches on that one like USB-C for example and if you want display port there's no display port here so yeah we'd like to see Lenovo work a little bit harder on this this seems like kind of resting on their laurels sort of here for the Y series not doing anything too innovative or too cool to push the envelope here in terms of the internals it's not hard to unscrew all the teeny tiny Phillips head screws. By the way, you can see how this picks up fingerprints too here on the surface. But oh my God, is it hard to pry off the, the, the plastic, plastic pry clips along the edge here. It is a nice tight fit. Well done there, Lenovo. But really hard to get this off and it wraps around. So this piece right here, it looks like the back ends right at this line where there's a seam. It doesn't. This is all one piece. So you're actually taking off the two right to here. So it takes some patience, it takes some care, but you can get the bottom off and we'll splice in a photo of the internal so you can see that is pretty upgradable and serviceable. There's also two fans and heat pipes in there and they're doing their job well because this machine, I mean it's relatively speaking, it's a slim laptop still. Those can get hot. Heat and noise are both well controlled. There's one hot spot on the bottom right around here. It reaches, this is winter, so Take that with a grain of salt in the summer, it'd probably read hotter, but it reached 99 degrees Fahrenheit, which is just a little teeny, barely above human body temperature. So that is not that burning hot. This is not like the MSI Ghost Pro that is real sizzler. Of course, that one pushes even higher in graphics. Now on the inside, the keyboard area stays pretty cool. All along here, the, the corresponding place to match the hotspot on the bottom would be the enter key where it reaches about 99 degrees. The rest of it's around 80 degrees and places are 75 Fahrenheit again. So that's fairly cool. And we didn't see any undue thermal throttling here. Even when it's unplugged, it will run the CPUs. It'll hit turbo boost, just not as often. So Lenovo did things, those things right. You get the good core performance here. This is not a touch screen on the 17 inch. There is no touch screen option for the 17 inch. So this 17.3 inch panel is IPS. It's an anti-glare, as Lenovo says, display, which means there's sort of like a screen protector cover on it. It just cuts back on glare a little bit. This is not a matte screen. Honestly, from the sides, it makes it look slightly milky, but it's not absolutely hideous. Anyway, no touch option, just 1920 by 1080 for the 17 inch. This is actually the better panel in terms of metrics. In brightness, it reaches 349 nits of brightness, which is pretty darn bright. The color calibration wasn't that off in the factory and was easily fixed by our Spider 4 Pro colorimeter. Black levels are just okay at 0.5, which, uh, but the brightness helps still to bring the contrast up to 700 to 1. Now, RGB color gamut for sRGB, 92%. You know, we'd like to see 99 if we can, but that's not too terrible. 71% for Adobe RGB versus the usual 75% for $1,000 and up laptops. So not too bad. IPS display. Again, the glare coating is fairly effective. Um, 
in terms of pulse width modulation, that is the screen refresh being visible. It, it does happen on lower brightness settings. Again, this little cost cutting there that they're using that sort of technology. It's not uncommon on laptops. And, so it's pretty decent. Let's switch over to the 15.6 inch. Then. Now our 15.6 inch is a touch screen. It has the same kind of anti-glare coating on it, but this one supports touch, which is certainly a nice feature. And with a smaller laptop, you're more likely to reach across. I think you know, figures with a 17 inch, well, you probably aren't. Plus they're trying to keep it affordable. There is a 4K option for this. Add around two or $300 on, and you can get this with a 4K UHD display if you want, but we have the standard 1080p touch panel on this one. Met in terms of display metrics, this one doesn't do as well. This is 249 nits of brightness, so it's not as bright as the 17-inch model. Black level is a little bit better, though, at 0.44, but given the, lack, the lesser brightness, the contrast ratio is 560 to 1 lower, so not as good. 66% only of sRGB, 50% of Adobe RGB. You're not talking about, wow, what saturated colors here. It's okay. It's not bad. It's not great either. Again, the MSI Apache Pro, the GE62 model, beats it in terms of display quality, but that is not a touch screen. So for those of you who want a touch screen, you want to keep that in mind. And there are more expensive options with touch screens like the Dell XPS 15 Infinity, the HP Omen 15. So in this price segment, it, having a touch screen at all, I suppose, is still kind of a wow. Again, this one goes for about $1,100. Both of these have 60 watt hour batteries that are sealed inside. If you do undo those Phillips head screws and pry off that bottom, you could get to it if you did need to service it. The Novo claims around four and a half hours of runtime, which is not fantastico, is it exactly? No. Well, you know, the nice thing is they're not being optimistic about that. In fact, we did manage around four and a half, five hours, sometimes even five and a half hours. That's with the regular balance power setting brightness set to 50%, which is certainly tolerable. And that's just doing productivity work, not playing games, not doing video editing in Premiere, which these are perfectly well suited to. These are powerful laptops that do compete with the XPS 15 Infinity, the ZenBook Pro UX501, and other powerhouse laptops that are designed for pro apps. These can handle those things. So if you're looking for something for school and you need to do something like video editing, you do use Adobe Premiere or whatever it is for your editing. Fine, you're doing big software compiles. These have the horsepower to do it. Now for benchmarks, both of these have the same stuff inside and they benchmark nearly identically. No surprise there. So we're gonna put up a benchmark screen next so you can see and read them for yourself and pause it if you want to actually peruse those in detail and think about them. The scores are as expected and like the competition that have similar graphics card and similar CPUs, they hold their own, no surprise. Both of these have Intel dual band Wi-Fi, NO211 AC, and Bluetooth 4.0, a 720p OK webcam. And of course, it is also a gaming laptop. We're in Fallout 4 here, running at full HD 1920 by 1080 resolution with a mix of medium and high settings as recommended by NVIDIA GeForce Experience. Frame rates are great on this. It's looking pretty nice. And this is the 17-inch model we're using, a little higher color gamut, a little higher brightness on it. Uh-oh, going to get blown up. Absolutely fine. Very good performance in Fallout 4. It is a demanding game. And it works well. And like I said, the thermals on this are also pretty good too. It doesn't get burning hot. It get, you can, you'll hear it. it. The fans will, will run, but it's not deafening. About 44 dB or so, which isn't that loud. So there it is. Fallout 4 on the Lenovo Y500 with NVIDIA GTX 960M. So that's Lenovo Y700, the 15 and the 17 inch models. There is, like I said, a 14 inch model as well, one with a very low end configuration available, but uh, these two are kind of middle of the road mainstream configurations as far as the Y700 series goes for these two sizes. And if you're on a real tight budget and you're looking for a gaming laptop, they do have some good things to offer, including a fairly slim design, not particularly light. These guys have packing some weight here. You get a 1080p display, the NVIDIA GTX 960M, a quad-core CPU, pretty good thermals too. It doesn't get too loud, it doesn't get too hot. It's a, you know, powerful machine. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Be sure to visit our website for the full written review and subscribe to our YouTube channel. 
Oh, and be sure to check out our other Lenovo reviews, of course, also the MSI Gaming Laptop reviews that we have on our channel, the Alienware's as well, and there's the Dell XPS 15 Infinity too.